Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we are going to be doing the finale of Object Competition Season 3 but before we get onto today's competition guys we need to go over the results of the previous competition which was the Proto Venus competition and if you remember this was a this was a really really cool one and yeah it looks like the victor just looking at the um, announcements here so it looks like King 47 took the win with their object here. So this Proto Venus, the one that had lots of bashes onto it, craters, impact marks. This was the uh, winner of that competition. So a massive congratulations to him. And yeah, guys, with that all said and done, a massive thank you to everyone who uh, participated in this competition. But yeah, that all said and done, let's move on to today's competition. Okay, guys, for the finale of Season 3 Object Competitions, it's basically a free-for-all. You can literally make any object you want. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, let's go ahead and uh, open the menu up. And there's a lot of reading today. Everyone has gone all in with uh, their descriptions here. So, right, we're going to be starting off with Pluto Neon's object here. So, this one is called Celestial Treasure. So, let's see what he has got for us here. And we can see straight away, that's some pretty cool-looking landmass. Right, so let's see what he's said. So, he's put... Uh, Kinza Mawin, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, pronounced Kinza Mawin, which is Arabic for celestial treasure. Fun fact for you there. Um, it's a super earth, double the size and um, octuple the mass of earth, meaning it has double the gravity. Its sky has a darker shade of blue than earth, a deep electric blue like dark morning and evening blue hours. For mysterious pale green clouds looming in the sky, it resides in the habitable zone of a star very similar to the sun, with one large moon and one large sub moon as well as similar rotation speed to the Earth. It has both spherical and flat pyramidic rings that may shine white or or rainbow. Okay, vast water-filled craters. So you can see, you'll see there, there. So that's looking cool. Um, spinal uh, peninsulas and bizarre islands that can be seen from space, especially the enormous Mimas-like crater on the southern hemisphere forming a near-complete mega, um, mega star. Uh, please turn on surface illumination and hide clouds to see all of them. Oh, okay. Interesting stuff, right? So hide the clouds. Ah, okay, so there you go. Because you can see a good um, you can see a good look of all the uh, craters there. So let's see if we can find this Mimus looking crater. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh my god, look at that. Look how cool that is. He must have spent a lot of time working on it. It's even got a face. <laughs> it even has like, something that looks like a face. That's pretty cool. So there's obviously the Mimus crater. What if we uh, hide the water as well? So there's a... Oh, that gets rid of it all. But yeah, there's a full look of uh, the object without the water. So yeah, it's a pretty good looking object. I like the colour combinations on this guy as well. So yeah, that's what um, this object is. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, I like the storm clouds on it as well. And yeah, got obviously lots of craters. There's a massive crater there. Let's have a look there. That's a huge one. Maybe that's the Mimus crater he was talking about. But yeah, what do you guys think of that? Cool. Yeah, I like it. So yeah, there is that object there. So a very nice job indeed from uh, Pluto Neon. So that's the uh, first object there. Um, he also put the land and water is highly ab ab abdomen in minerals. So abundant at large crystals protruding the surface like plants. The surface was supposed to be a dull grayish rainbow color like a false image to represent the absurd variety of materials. But he did not have that option, so I went with orange and violet for vibrancy. Volcanoes and global storms are very active and common on this planet, and the coasts and beaches have various colours of sand from naturally grinded precious stones like green, peridots and multicoloured quartzes, rainbow opals, black obsidian, etc. Rumen has it that a large bejeweled mermaid-like queen dominates the whole planet. Uh, that's cool, I like it. So there's a lot of reading. So that was Celestial Treasure from Pluto Neon. Okay, right. Next up, we have got Stuck in 2D's object. So let's go ahead and uh, just search that up. Okay, so here it is. Right. So this object is called Edkinus. I hope I'm saying that right. Okay, so here it is. It's a small little object, isn't it? Okay, so let's see what we got here. Okay, so this is Stuckin's one. Okay, so he has put... This is my submission. It is a mars mast and sour-sized... Um, Crophonia in the planet. Once billions of years old, this was half a world around 0.9 AU from its red dwarf star. It was a thriving civilization similar to our own, but with an, an, an unified people instead of divided nations on an underworld, a water world um, 0.87 times the mass of Earth. Then a rogue planet within the stellar neighborhood was captured by the star. This caused a new planetary migration as it was a sub Jupiter. The habitable world was flung inwards just a few stellar radii from the star. Over time, it evaporated to the core you see today. Ah, okay. Cool. Soon after, the water evaporated and the world was dead within a few Earth days of this orbital change. Soon after, the water evaporated completely off the planet. Then the biomass slowly but surely the ro the weak rock itself. Okay. 
Uh, billions of years later, all that is left is the iron-rich core and a very splintered and unstable tectonic system on the crust due to stellar tidal forces. Okay, pretty cool. Right, um, this causes what little solid surface there is to be recycled constantly and also replenishes in how many CO2 and water vapor atmosphere. This planet creates clouds of silicate rock on the day side that travel incredibly high speed winds to the dark side of the planet where, you, where they instantly solidify. Feeding the huge sandstorm system that covers the entire dark side. You can see this if you turn on the flashlight. Okay, so we'll have a little look um, behind there now. So let's see. Flashlight. Uh, where are you? Flashlight, please. Yep. Oh, ah, okay. So you can see, yeah, one side, it's all good, but the other side is all dust storm. How has he done that, I wonder? That is really cool. So you can see this side is always, also, you can see the surface, but that side is completely all invisible and you cannot see anything. That's very, very nicely done. I wonder how you've done that. I've never seen an object like that before. That's um, pretty cool. Okay, uh, you can just barely see the activity through the dust clouds on the dark side. The sand that falls on these dust storms eventually is blown to the day side where it forms solid dunes at higher elevations where the temperature isn't as extreme. You may see these formations on the day side as well as high albedo regions. Eventually, though, these dunes fall to lower elevations and are recycled back into the planet's version of the water cycle. That's, um, that's pretty crazy stuff. Uh, the atmosphere is also high in alkali metals, mainly potassium and sodium, due to their lower melting points. These sometimes flare up if they come in contact with water to form these beautiful formations that interstellar travellers would have called the fire blooms. That's, um, that's really, really cool. And yeah, if you didn't know the element potassium, yeah, if it touches water, it bursts into flames. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's have a little look underneath. So can we actually... Okay, so that's all atmosphere. Okay, so he must have done something really weird with the atmosphere to form that. I like it. That's really, really cool. So there's the thick sort of sandstorm clouds. Very, very nice indeed. So there is that world from Stuck in 2D there. Awesome. Okay, so who have we got next? Next up, we got King 47. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, so let's uh, search it up. Okay, so this he's he's made a fair. Okay, cool. So let's see what he is made for fair. Right. Okay, cool. So Fea is a hypothesized ancient planet in the early solar system that, according to the giant impact hypothesis, collided with early Earth around 4.5 billion years ago, with some of the resulting ejected debris gathering to form the moon. The remnants of Fea are still inside Earth, probably located in the two super, super constant size layers of rock beneath West Africa and the Pacific Ocean. Make sure you turn off the atmosphere. Okay, cool. So let's uh, turn that off. And there you go. So there is Fea. So you can see there's a collision mark there as well. Obviously from the uh, bombardment period, but yeah, there you go. So there's a few craters. Obviously a lot of oceans and stuff on it. Bit bit of green as well, which is pretty cool. And it also has city lights as well. So let's uh, turn um, flashlight off again. And yeah, got a bit of city lights on Faya as well. So there we go. There is Faya, and we don't realistic. We need directional. There we go. Cool. All right, so that is King Forty Seven's object. All right, next up we have got Siren's object. So let's see what he is prepared for us today. Okay. Okay. So let's see where are we? Okay. So his object is called EOS. Okay, here it is here. Right, okay, I see a custom texture already. My submission, which comes with a little text file. Okay, make sure to look at his surface via this view. Okay, so there's also a text file, so I'm just opening that up now, so just bear with me, guys. Okay, we have got a lot of reading. Okay, right, so EOS 2B logs. Okay, so data. Also, you can see the mass and stuff here, so I'm not going to read that out, so you can just see all those there. Okay, advanced life. Oh, no, he's also put some other stuff. Hottest recorded temperature, plus 47 degrees Celsius, and the coldest recorded temperature is in the Northern Highlands, minus 102 Celsius. Okay. Advanced life. The humanoid creatures living in this world are not yet very advanced and still rely on hunting other creatures. There are two species of humanoid creatures which are close relatives of each other. The second humanoid species is more like the smaller monkeys of our own home. Okay. Terrain. Deserts. There are a few deserts on this world with the biggest one be in the central desert the central desert is easily spotted around the equator and northern part of the world okay let's actually just have a little look for that okay here we are okay right so we'll just rotate it around so we can see a bit okay so that's got to be the central desert area somewhere here the craters do look really really cool so he's want to use one of saturn's moon's textures by the looks of it so that's the looking cool okay so um, temperatures can normally average 25 to 45 celsius throughout the year but more north temperatures usually don't get above 10 degrees the other deserts are found on the bigger islands in southern parts of the world. Okay, so that'll be somewhere down there. Okay. Uh, the northern Arctic is also known... Oh, no, no. The north pole of the world is covered by a small polar gap and lots of ice and snow on the surface where various amounts of plant life also thrive. 
The northern Arctic is also known as the Highlands as it has multiple kilometres above sea level. And then the remaining terrain of the world is stunning. The islands have amazing beaches. The southern canyon has great views on glaciers. And the rest of the plant life makes up views all around the world around the, around the southern poles. Okay, so there we are. So that is this world. And i got to say, really cool. So that's EOS. And yeah, I'm just looking at the... Um, he actually posted a map of it in the uh, in Discord here. And yeah, it's um, it's looking cool. And yeah, that's, um, that's it in the uh, flesh here. So you can see the craters. Good looking world. So there's a full rotation of it. You can see also the North Pole there. Got some ice and stuff going on. If we look in the south... Uh, more water heavy in the south but yeah there you go so there's a full look of his world very nice stuff indeed there so there is eos from siren okay cool so okay what have we got next okay next up we have got exiled neptunians one so here we go okay so that is this object here so exiled neptunian let's see what he has got for us here it's a gas giant whoa okay and he has called it he's just called the object how so it looks like he's uh, submitted a glitched object for this uh, competition. So here it is. And what has happened here? <laughs> that is very, very weird. Its temperature is ridiculously high. That is um, pretty, pretty crazy stuff indeed. Um, one thing I want to do, though, just for fun, I'm going to put it to zero. I want to see if it has any custom texture. Okay, so it does have a really weird custom texture as well. It's using a shadow negative contrast on it. Giving us a very, very weird looking object as well. But obviously the way it was intended, it needs to be super high in temperature, which gives you basically that. It looks like we may have uh, bugged it out a bit. Oh no, there you go, there it is, that's fixed it. Okay, so that's what it's supposed to look like, cool. So there is his world. Okay, next up we have got an object from the user Navigational Satellite. I believe this is their first uh, competition actually, I've not seen them before. Okay, so... so here it is. Okay, so it's a Venus by the looks of it. So he's called it Wasp 119AC. So here it is. Okay, so zooming in. It appears to be a Venus texture combined with a few. Maybe it's got a few crater marks on it. Is that? I think that's mainly it. So just having a look around. Yeah, it appears to be a Venus texture with a lot of uh, craters bashed into it. So it looks like he's uh, yeah done some uh, craters. He hasn't given any description. Um, I mean, he says a planet with a giant crater that was hypothesized by astronomers have been struck by a rogue planet. Dwarf planet the size of Callisto. Okay, so that's a wasp there. Okay, next up we've got Chensich's world. So let's uh, open this up. Okay, so where is it? So let's see. Um, Chensich's world is called this one. Okay, so it is this object here. Okay, cool. So let's place it in. Here we go. Okay, so this is called Ante Mortem. Hope I'm saying that right. Looks uh, pretty beaten up as well. So what is going on here? Okay. So he put a planet that is about oh a planet that is about to be engulfed by an expanding red giant. Okay, so this is probably what Mercury will look like eventually as well, um, as it crashes into the sun. So there we go. Oh, I should say engulfed by the sun. So there you are. As we can see, it's absolutely scorching hot here. I mean, if we look at the surface, I mean, seven thousand three hundred at its hottest point. So we've got some insane temperatures going on there. And obviously behind it, you can see um, a little cooler. But yeah, that is uh, dangerously dangerously high temperatures there, and it does look really cool. Nice. Okay, next up we have an object from the user Earth. So, literally their name is Earth. It's this object here. It's called Isha's Star B. So let's place it in here. Okay. Right, so they have put in their description, this is a Hathor world I made and it has 99% Earth similarity and 99% life likelihood. Okay, looks like he probably based it off the Earth to begin with as well. Uh, looking at the stats, here you go, 99.9, 99.9. So almost a perfect object. Um, which is quite hard to get, but it's definitely possible, I believe. Um, if a glitch happens and doesn't say 99%, notify me. No, no, you're all good. It's all 99%ed uh, up on this object here. So very nice indeed. And yeah, that looks like um, this definitely probably started its life as an Earth, and he's obviously recustomized it. Uh, looking very nice indeed. So there's a look of it underneath as well. So it's got very, very uh, heavy ice caps and stuff as well. So there it is. East is star beat. Okay, next up, we're on to the last two objects now. So, opening the menu. Okay, so next up, we have got one from the user Charm Scob. I hope I'm saying you right. So, here it is. It's this object here. Okay, cool. Right, so over here. So, we've got On Sust, which is this object. Um, a Titan like planet in the outer reaches of its system with an average temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius. The methane vapour in its atmosphere is turning methane lakes, seas and oceans. The nitrogen in its atmosphere gave chance to life as we don't know it. Early intelligent life has appeared very different from Earth. They take hydrogen and produce methane. Okay, so here it is. Having a look underneath as well. 
So there you go, so it's got the methane sort of oceans going on it as well. Very nice indeed. So there is Onsuster. Okay, cool. Maybe that's what Titan would look like eventually. And then lastly, the last object of this competition as well, we have got the user trains submitting a brown dwarf. Okay, cool. Right, so... Oh, that um, would be good if I spelled it correctly. No, that's... Uh, I completely butchered that. There you go. I'm pressing the keys in the wrong one. Okay, so here it is. So comp trains brown dwarf. So here we are. And... Yeah, he literally just said brown dwarf I made. That's his only description for it. So here we are. So we can see it's going with a purple sort of colour theme. Um, obviously warmed up to have that slight glow to it. So yeah, there we are, guys. That does it for the finale object competition. So there we are. That is a full lineup of all of the objects for here. So we'll quickly rerun through them all as well. So starting all the way down at the bottom here, we have Pluto Neon's object, which was this one here. Then moving on, we had Stuck in 2D's one here, which was that remnant of a planet that um, got wrecked by a star and lost all of its material. Then we had uh, this object here from King 47, which was the Thayer. And then moving on again, we had Siren's object here, with the using one of Saturn's moon's textures, giving us a really, really nice looking object there. Then we had Exiled Neptunian's very, very glitchy Howl object right there. Then moving on, we had um, Navigational Satellite with their WASP-119AC object here. Then moving on, we had uh, Ante Mortem, which was um, submitted by Chensic. Then we had uh, Isha's Star B, which is submitted by Earth, the user Earth. Then we had this object again, which we just saw, so the Titan-like planet made by Charnscob. And then lastly, we had the Brown Dwarf made by the user Trains. So Okay, everyone, so hello from the uh, future. I'm actually filming this a day later than when I filmed the original video, and that is because I was actually a fool, and I actually forgot to include two of your guys' objects in here, so I went back and filmed it because I didn't want to leave them out. So continuing on, before we uh, finish up this video today, let's just open the menu up. So we actually have two more objects to do, so just search up the first one. Okay, so the first um, object of these last two from this competition is cause objects. Let's go ahead and see what they've got for us here. And this object is called Frostbite. So let's see what they have uh, prepared for us for this uh, final competition. So let's go ahead and just place it here for the time being. Okay, ooh. Okay, so this is Frostbite and it's a very nice looking blue world. Um, freezing cold blue planet with lots of ice. That's all they put for it. So here it is. Let's get a full good look of it as well. If we look underneath the clouds. So let's uh, take all that off. Okay, there you are. So you can see, yeah, very, very frozen up. Got a bit of um, ocean in there as well. But overall, yeah, very, very frozen indeed. And yeah, I really like the atmosphere and cloud colour. It does look pretty cold. So there is Frostbite from Core. So, yeah, very, very nice job indeed to them. And then lastly, the actual last object for this competition is from the user J248. So let's go ahead and see what they have uh, got for us here. Okay, here it is. And it's called Fusion, and it's a pretty big object. So here we go. Okay, so here it is. And he put, uh, made this custom gas giant a while ago using colours from all of my saved gas giants. Okay, cool. So it's a combination of all of his gas giants combined together. So here it is. So as we can see, mixes of pretty much every colour you can think of in there. So just a nice sort of look of it all the way down. So there is Fusion. So there we are, guys. That now does it properly. For this competition so yeah, apologies for having to film this little bit extra I mean it probably won't fit in the rest of the video very well but yeah thank you very much indeed anyway um, for everyone who has um, submitted for this competition as yeah this should be this should be a good one to uh, finish up this uh, series on or finish up season three of uh, competitions I think it's um, I think we've done really really well this season yeah massive thank you to everyone who has participated in um, all of the uh, competitions really because I mean it's been a lot of fun and I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, checking out each other's objects as well I mean it's been yeah, it's been great so yeah and uh, stay tuned as well um, let me know as well if you guys would like me to do like a season review like a season so we go back and view all the winning objects like we did for the previous competitions let me know if you want to see that I think that'll be really really cool but yeah with that all said and done guys again a massive thank you to everyone who um, participated in this competition and yeah also um, apologies to Core and J248 for missing their objects in the original recording, but yeah, I've included them all now, so it's all good. But yeah, with that all said and done, guys, make sure you have a great day, stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.